In this video, I'll show you how you can set up a steering wheel and pedals in Sim Racing Studio to control the motion of your platform for games that don't have motion support. Unfortunately, there are a lot of games that don't support motion platforms. Either the developers haven't created an API that outputs the telemetry, or the community simply hasn't created a plugin that uses memory hooks to find the data. Either way, we're left without motion for our platforms. However, in Sim Racing Studio, you can set up a joystick that will move the platform depending on the joystick or pedal movements. Before we get started, you will need to have a premium subscription for Sim Racing Studio. This enables joystick support, along with the ability to download Pro Tunings, as well as being able to use the mo mobile app. You can purchase one in the License tab under Setup by clicking the shopping cart icon next to Premium Subscription. You also need to make sure all your joysticks are detected and working properly in Windows. All right, let's get started. First, open up Sim Racing Studio, select Setup, and Joystick. This is the main joystick setup page. There are seven effects total, six of them which are directly related to motion, whereas Speed RPM is tied to the speeds of any fan kits you might have. I use some of my existing tunings to show those. So first, this one is set up to have no rotation. The first two, left and right, will roll the platform in either direction. This is for turns while driving or rolling in an aircraft. So as you can see, as I move my steering wheel to the left, rolls to the left. Or if I rotate the steering wheel to the right, rotates to the right. Next is front and back. These pitch the platform either forwards or backwards. So when I brake, it pitches forward to simulate the braking g-forces, as well as when I push on the accelerator, it pitches backwards, again simulating acceleration. So again, brake and gas. Finally is rotate. Switch it to one that supports that. This is tied to the yaw axis and will either rotate left or rotate right. As you can see, it can be combined with the left and right roll to provide more movement in racing sims. It, of course, can be tied directly to yaw for flight sims. And I'll show you how to set up this more advanced movement so you get that roll and yaw sensation. And this should work with H3, P3 um, through traction loss. Finally is speed RPM. And as mentioned before, this controls the fan speeds. So as I give it gas and accelerate, the fans speed up, simulating speed. As I reduce, it can go off. If I give it half gas, half throttle, I get half fan speed. This can also be tied to your throttle for flying sense. All right, let's go over to actually how to assign an axis. So I'll change it back to default and turn off motion. So in this particular video, I'll show you now how to set up a steering wheel and pedals. I'll create a separate video on how to set up a joystick, throttle, and rudder for flight or space sims. So, and when you're also setting up any particular joystick assignments, always make sure you have the status set to off. This will disable any motion so nothing crazy happens. But however, once you assign a joystick axis, you can turn it back on to test it. Right here in the profile window, this is where you'll select the profiles you created, create a new one, duplicate an existing profile so it can make it easier to use previous assignments, as well as delete a profile. I suggest creating a new profile, so you can just click the plus symbol here. The next icon is a duplicate, and the final one is delete when you actually have a profile that has assignments set into it. So from here, I'll click on plus, pop up the new window. You can name these anything you want. In this case, I'll just name it wheel. Now we start assigning an axis. So starting with left, I'll click on the gear icon. This will open up a new window, and at the top, you'll be able to select the joysticks that are currently detected by Windows. So in this case, since I'm using my steering wheel, I'll select the Fanatec DD2. The next section here is Mode, and this is a critically important step. So there'll be two that are listed, Dual Axis and Single Axis, that you can select. A Dual Axis controller are things like a steering wheel or a gamepad thumbstick, a joystick, a hottest throttle, basically anything that can have a positive or a negative value, or just two ways of motion on a single axis. So with a steering wheel, I can move it left and I can move it right. With the joystick, I can move it left and right as, as well as forward and backwards. Most hottest throttles can move forward 
and backwards, and this is different than an accelerator pedal, since HOTUS throttles can have both a positive and a negative value, depending on how it's set up. Single axis controllers are things that just have one primary direction, like an accelerator pedal, or a brake pedal, or a clutch. It just generally moves in one direction, or a single axis. A gamepad trigger is another example. This is usually for the single axle throttles, brakes, clutches, uh, and for our purpose, it'll be used for the accelerator and the brake pedal. You can also reverse the axis here, uh, but you can also do it while tuning, and I'll cover that later if you're unsure, and particularly if it needs to be reversed or not. So since we are currently setting up the axis for a steering wheel, I will select dual axis. Next, we actually assign the axis. And it's critically important you follow the warning meshes that pop up that says, move axis to its max position, hold and then click confirm. What this means is that when you move the joystick in a direction you wanna be utilized, it also sets the maximum range for that axis. So if you don't hold it in the max position while you click the confirm button, it won't be calibrated correctly. So yes, you have to hold the joystick, the wheel, the throttle or the pedals at its maximum movement and then click the button at the same time. So don't let off the gas and then click it. You need to hold it down and click it or hold the steering wheel all the way to the left and click it. You will also see the type field change when it detects the axis and have an arrow pointed to the direction it detects. This arrow or greater or lesser sign tells you which way it's set up the axis. So be very sure it's pointing in the direction you desire. It should usually change once you reach the maximum movement in the direction you're pushing so since I'm setting up the left axis, I want to make sure it's pointed to the left. The axis field shows which number of the axis is being detected for that controller. As you see from my direct drive, it shows zero, which is the first primary axis. Whereas for the pedals, we'll have three axis, zero for the accelerator, one for the brake, and two for the clutch. Now while holding the steering wheel to the left, I can click confirm button to see the left axis. I can visually test that it's working by the white bar next to left. As I rotate the steering wheel to the left, you can see the bar filling up with blue, which indicates the axis is detected and working properly. Now I need to set up the right axis for the steering wheel. We do the same thing by clicking the gear icon. I choose my DT2. I make sure mode is set to dual axis. And then I just turn the wheel all the way to the right. I confirm that the arrow is pointed to the right. And then while holding the steering wheel to the right, I click Confirm. Now it's time for a quick test. I do this by going up to the status and switching to on. And now the platform will roll to the right when it move the steering wheel to the right and roll to the left when I roll the steering wheel to the left. Next, I'll set up the pedals, but I'll turn off motion first by selecting the status back to off. To set up the brakes, I'll select the gear icon in front, which will pitch the platform to the front when brakes are applied. I'll select my sprint pedals. And this time in mode, I make sure it's single axis since the brake only moves in one direction. If needed, I can reverse the axis here, but again, I can adjust that in tuning. Now, when I press down on my brake, you can see the type changes to axis one and the arrow is pointed to the right. However, you can see the arrow change to the left when I release the brake. This is because it's detecting the change in direction of the axis and why it's critically important you hold down a single axis at the same time until you click confirm. So with the brake completely pressed, I confirm the arrow is pointed in the correct direction to the right, and then I click confirm at the same time while holding the brake pedal down. Now I'll do the same for the accelerator pedal. I select my sprints, make sure it's single axis, hold down the accelerator, and I can see the axis is detected as zero, and the arrow is pointed to the right since I'm holding down the accelerator. I'll click confirm. And back on the window, I can see the brake fill up when I push down, as well as the gas pedal. Now it's time to test all the motion. So I set status to on. I'm turning and pushing the gas at the same time. I can see it pitches up while I turn. I brake, while I turn as well. You 
You can stop here if you just want basic movement and don't have a fan kit, but I'll continue on the show to get more movement with rotate left and right, as well as setting up speed. The next ones, rotate left and right, are for primarily for yaw movement, but you can assign it for racing as well. However, you will need to make an adjustment in the tuning section for it to work properly, much like the steering wheel setup for left and right will follow the same process. For rotate left, I'll click the gear icon, select my steering wheel, make sure it's dual axis, rotate the steering wheel to the left, confirm the arrows to the left, and click confirm. For rotate right, click the gear icon, select my steering wheel, dual axis, rotate it to the right, confirm the arrows pointing to the right, and has the right axis selected as well, click confirm. Now, when we test the motion, you can see the platform is shifting in the opposite direction when I rotate the steering wheel. You can leave it this way if you like, if you'd like to have the opposite uh, movement for simulating g-forces, but I tend to like the platform to move in the direction I'm going in game. To do this, you can quickly switch over to tuning, go to motion, and in the yaw max telemetry, you can set this to a negative value. This will set and invert any particular axis within by adding a negative value within max telemetry. So now when I actually turn left, it rotates to the left. When I turn the wheel to the right, it rotates to the right. It also adds some of the roll from what we set up earlier. Once you're all done, much like I did in tuning, click save to make sure that this is saved. If you don't have a wind kit and only want to set up a joystick support for racing, you can skip ahead to the tuning section. Otherwise, let's go back and set up the speed RPM setting. So I'll disable motion again by turning the status to off, clicking the gear icon and speed RPM, selecting my pedals, making sure it's set up to single axis, pushing all the way down on my accelerator, holding it down and making sure that the arrow is pointed to the right, which is the positive for acceleration, axis zero, which is the accelerator, and clicking confirm. So now to test it, I'll turn status back to on, press on the accelerator, which pushes me back, as well as my fan to come on. And once I'm done completing testing, I will turn status back to off. Now that your steering wheel and pedals are completely set up, whenever you want to use the joystick control, go to setup, joystick, and turn the status to on. Also, it won't automatically turn off when you're done with the game, so be sure to go back to setup and joystick and switch the status back to off when you're finished playing. Now for tuning. In order to enable tuning, you will have to turn the status to on. So what I will do is I will select the tuning I want to use, go to status to on, then I will go to tuning, motion, and I can confirm my tuning is active in the profiles in use, where it says the telemetry data is joy for the joystick, as well as the D2 Fusenfeld profile that I'm currently using. And I've written a detailed joystick tuning guide, which is listed below, so I won't cover all the details in this video. However, I'll go over my current settings and why I have them set up this way. Starting off with power max angle, I have that set to 100, as well as smoothing. So with power max angle set at 100, it'll provide the maximum amount of movement available from power max angle. And with smoothing set to 100, it will reduce the jarring movements felt when steering quickly to the left or right, or when quickly moving from the accelerator to the brake. So to the left, to the right, gas, brake. If smoothing is not set all the way there, it'll have a much more harder jarring motion. I have reaction speed set to 70 as well to smooth out the motion since quick, large joystick changes can be harsh. And boost is set to one since it amplifies small joystick movements and will create extremely jarring motion. For pitch and roll, I've increased the effect sliders to 15. This allows for brake and acceleration effects to have a more total pitch in the final position of the platform. A max telemetry remains at five. Yaw only works if you utilize rotate left and rotate right. So for racing, I found that it can have a hard jarring motion to left and right if it's not reduced. Therefore, I found I moved the slider down to five to provide a more nuanced feel. Also as shown during the initial setup, the left and right rotations weren't following roll, 
So I reverse the axis movement by changing max telemetry to a negative number. This is a quick and easy way to reverse any axis in Sim Racing Studio for any game. Finally, all the other sliders are reduced to zero as there simply isn't a joystick axis related to these effects. It also prevents any issues in the final position of the platform when it's calculating the pitch, roll, and yaw. With that, everything is set up and ready to use for games for any particular game that doesn't have telemetry support for motion. Just showing you how it looks with a few different random motions. I'll be doing another video specific to HOTA systems and rudder setups for flight and space sims. So look for that really soon within the next day or so. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section and let me know if this helps. Thanks.